10 geniuses who were shockingly horrible people. Number 10. Bobby Fischer The name Bobby Fischer is synonymous with genius, mainly because he kicked so much ass at chess he brought it back into the mainstream. People who'd never played a game in their life were enthralled by this chess wizard as he stomped all over Russian grandmasters like they were cockroaches made of eggshells. His influence on the world of chess was so great that his match with Russian master Boris Spassky was front-page news. Following his victory, the entire U.S. was taken by what is now colloquially referred to as the Fisher Boom, which saw chess receive unprecedented amounts of media attention. Field of awfulness, anti-America, anti-Semitism. Despite the fact that Fisher quickly became a media darling following his victory in 1972 and many thousands of Americans cheered his name, Fisher's stance on America was anything but kind. Claiming that he hated the country he once called home, Fisher was quoted as saying about 9-11, I applaud the act, and within minutes of the same breath, fuck the US, I want to see the US wiped out. He was also a raging anti-Semite to the point that even his most die-hard supporters found him repugnant. But boy, was that a good chess game. Hey guys. Number 9. Virginia Woolf Virginia Woolf is a name that will likely always be remembered. One, because it's awesome. Two, because she made some of the greatest contributions to the literary arts in recent history. Basically, if you haven't read one of her books, chances are you've at least heard of them, making her more famous than 99% of writers ever. Field of Awfulness, Intellectual Superiority and Elitism Today her books are studied and read by millions of children, but unless those kids have a trust fund, Wolf would have hated the thought of them reading her work. You see, Wolf was a staunch supporter of the leisure class, in other words, people with enough money not to work, and was quoted as saying that reading and learning should be exclusive to them. Yes, Wolf felt that learning and reading was a special gift that belonged to rich people. She took class snobbishness a step further in her own home. When her diaries were made public, people combing through them noticed a rather unsettling trend. Wolf loved talking smack about her servants. In her private diaries, she expressed everything from disgust to pity at the people who literally cleaned up after her mess. She felt they deserved more, but also believed they'd never be able to enjoy life on as deep a level as she did. Wolf eventually took to giving all her servants orders via notes she'd leave around the house, and when her orders weren't followed, she'd note in her diary that this only proved the inherent stupidity of the working class. You know, instead of saying something to their faces, like an actual human being would. Number 8. Richard Dawkins Dawkins is the guy who came up with the theory of social memes in his book The Selfish Gene way back in 1976. The book was an instant classic and is still considered by many as required reading for anyone interested in evolutionary biology or social theory. However, despite this, Dawkins is mostly known today as the author of The God Delusion, which is a shame. Instead of being known as the guy who developed a massively important theory which helps explain cultural evolution and why we as humans act the way we do, he's known as the guy who wrote the book on being a turd online. Field of awfulness? Being a turd online. Dawkins has a reputation for being a very active and avid user of the internet. However, rather than use his many years of scientific experience and his deep knowledge of human and evolutionary biology to educate people, he's taken to basically becoming a comment troll. For example, when Rebecca Watson, the founder of the mega-popular Skeptic blog, attended a conference on skepticism, a random guy cornered her in an elevator and asked her if she'd like to come to his room at four in the morning, meaning he likely did not have movies and board games in mind. Watson firmly told the guy to do one, and wrote about the experience online. In a nutshell, she said that what the guy did was creepy as hell, which, to be fair, it totally was. Dawkins, for some unknown reason, then appeared in the comment section of her site and made a wildly sexist and demeaning comment addressing a fictional Muslim woman called Muslima. Essentially, he said that Watson's experience was trivial in comparison to other things that are happening in the world, so she had no right to complain about something that made her feel massively uncomfortable. Yet, according to Dawkins, you have no right to complain about stuff that's important or personally affects you, unless you are literally the single most oppressed person on the planet. Unless, of course, you're Dawkins and want to act super butthurt about people calling you out on proposing a sliding scale for sexual assault, then you can complain all you want, because that's way more important than raising awareness about sexism. 
Number seven, Aristotle. Aristotle is one of those names that is just dripping with good vibes. As one of the ancient world's most famous philosophers, Aristotle's life and work are still studied today, thousands of years after he kicked the bucket. Aristotle is credited with being the mind behind some of the most enduring philosophical concepts, including basic freaking ethics. Though Socrates beat him to the punch, Aristotle expanded upon the concept and encouraged people to be good to one another. Field of awfulness? Sexism. Unless that person was a woman. Aristotle's views on the fairer sex are so expansive that they get their own Wikipedia page. He basically asserted that women should be subservient to men, to the point where they shouldn't even be allowed to eat as much food. He also claims that women were basically incomplete men, and thus inferior. But so what, right? That was 2,000 years ago. Surely everyone was like that back then. Except they weren't. For example, Spartan women from the same time period were treated with a relative amount of respect. Queen Gorgo of Sparta famously responded to one person, asking why Spartan women could rule men, with the frankly badass line, because only Spartan women produce men. Yes, she actually said that. It wasn't just put into the film 300 for effect. Spartan women were that awesome, and Aristotle was that pig-headed. Number 6. Isaac Newton Isaac Newton has made a bigger impact on science and physics than just about anybody, and will go down in history as the guy who pretty much came up with the theory of gravity. Field of awfulness, endless feuding, and grudge-bearing. Throughout most of his adult life, Isaac Newton had an ongoing feud with one Robert Hooke. Some of you may recognize that name, but the majority of you won't, and that has a lot to do with Newton. Hooke theorized the existence of gravity before Newton did. The only problem was that he wasn't smart enough to calculate the exact math behind it. When Newton published Principa, in which he shared his famous gravitational law, Hooke pointed out that he should have gotten some of the credit. Newton disagreed, since although Hooke had formulated and hypothesized gravity's existence, he sucked eggs at the mathing part, and therefore wasn't allowed in Newton's book. Because Newton was more famous than Hooke, he supposedly used his influence to suppress Hooke's work until after his death. Newton took to outright slandering Hooke, calling him an idiot in open letters. In fact, Newton's famous standing on the shoulders of giants quote was a direct insult to Hooke, in reference to the fact Hooke was simply observing something much greater than himself. It's even suggested that Newton destroyed the only known portrait of Hooke after his death, because that is how you make a statement. Today, Newton lives on as one of the most famous minds in scientific history, whereas Hooke is just a footnote in a scientific textbook. Number 5. Thomas Edison Though Thomas Edison's reputation has suffered a slight knock in recent years due to the fact that Tesla has become the patron saint of the internet, he's still regarded as one of the foremost inventors in history. Field of awfulness? Killing animals. During the so-called War of Currents, Thomas Edison had an ongoing feud with the aforementioned Tesla over which form of electricity was superior, Edison's DC current or Tesla's AC. The obvious answer was AC current, based on Tesla's designs, because it was invented by the much more handsome scientist. Also, it was like wicked efficient or something. Not wanting to be proven wrong and determined to keep America shackled by the stupidly inferior DC system, Edison tried to prove to America that AC current was dangerous by murdering puppies with it. Yes, when faced with the fact that someone had invented a much, much better system for providing electricity than his own, Edison committed puppy-side as a retort. When proving that you're smarter involves animal murder, you're not an inventor, you're a serial killer in training. Number 4. Nikola Tesla Nikola Tesla is hugely famous online and within pop culture. Though in his lifetime his contributions to science and technology were largely overlooked, today he is widely regarded as one of the best minds science has ever known. Field of awfulness? Eugenics. Eugenics, for those of you too lazy to open a new tab on Wikipedia, is the art of selective breeding on a mass scale. It's the act of actively denying people with undesirable traits, such as infirmity or stupidity, the right to reproduce, which supposedly betters the human race. You'll notice that this is a terrible, horrible idea, if only because, if it happened, you'd never have gotten reality TV. And Tesla loved that idea. In his writings, Tesla examined the notion that the year 2100 will see eugenics universally established, referring to it as important for weeding out undesirable strains. 
Of course, none of this alters the fact that he was a fantastically gifted mind, but it's more than a little disconcerting to realize that this guy fully supported the thought of certain people getting denied the chance to mate, especially once you realize he never took a wife or had a kid. This is one of the smartest people to have ever lived, and he didn't think it was a good idea to have a baby. How high were this guy's standards? Number 3. John Lennon Peace, love, and goodwill to all men. That's what John Lennon was all about. Well, that and taking enough drugs to cause sniffer dogs to go into early retirement. Lennon is effectively the face of the 60s, and by extension, the hippie movement. And those guys were all about peace. So what could Lennon possibly have done wrong? Field of awfulness? Hitting women. Lennon was the Chris Brown of his day. That's not making a cheap joke. That's a direct comparison that has been made about him. Lennon openly admitted that he used to beat the living crap out of women. In an interview with Playboy magazine, a magazine literally dedicated to appreciating the awesomeness of womankind, albeit the naked variety, women beat her or not, you have to admire his sense of irony. The kicker of this is that very few people knew this about Lennon. Whereas Chris Brown has become a walking joke and has his domestic violence charges listed very clearly on his Wikipedia page, not a single mention is made of John Lennon's similar abuse, despite him being massively more famous and influential than Chris Brown will ever be. And when it is mentioned, his fans are so quick to defend his actions that they almost break through time and land on the receiving end of one of his punches personally. Number 2. James Cameron if you're about to complain that we're putting James Cameron on the same list as Isaac Newton, just remember that this guy won 11 Oscars for a film everyone already knew the ending to, and convinced people to pay $15 to see Dancers with Blue Aliens. If that's not genius, we don't know what is. Field of awfulness? Ego. Cameron's ego is legendary in the film industry, but the guy made Titanic, so surely he deserves to be a little proud of himself, right? Sure he does. We'd never begrudge him for being proud of his work. We will, however, begrudge him for yelling at actresses until they cry and nailing people's phones to a wall, which are all things he has done in the past. But to truly see how much of a douche Cameron is, you only have to read this quote he once said to Linda Hamilton, his wife at the time. Anybody can be a father or a husband. There are only five people in this world who do what I can do, and I'm going for that. Come on, Cameron. Yes, Titanic was good, but it wasn't good enough to get away with saying that to your wife. It's not like you wrote Star Wars. Number 1. Henry Ford Yeah, this guy made cars and revolutionized how they were manufactured. And yeah, you've probably heard that he was a raging anti-Semite. However, the extent he went to express this notion will likely surprise you. Field of awfulness? Inspiring Hitler. Yes, that Hitler. Though Ford's anti-Semitic views are well known, few realize just how far they went. Hitler was quoted as saying that he was directly inspired by Ford, even hanging a portrait of Ford in his office. One of the most evil, reviled men in history hung a picture of Henry Ford on his wall. He was also the only American Hitler referred to by name in Mein Kampf. Talk about an honor. We could go on, but honestly, how the hell could we top inspiring Hitler? We don't even think Satan has the files in his office to classify something that awful. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button in the top right. Our channel has loads of other awesome videos just like this.